Good morning everybody. Welcome to, to this meeting of the Licensing and Regulatory Committee for the 11th of June 2021. I will now ask the Governance Office, Officer to read out the domestic arrangements. Karen, if you could please. Thank you, Chair. Please ensure that you maintain social distance from all other persons in the Chamber and in the social areas. Please also ensure that you wear a mask unless you are speaking or if you are unable to do so, and that you use hand sanitizer and wipes provided. Please maintain social distance at all times during the meeting and during any breaks. Please do not interrupt other speakers. If you are attending to the meeting to speak and persistently interrupt the meeting, you may be asked to leave. Additionally, you will be invited to speak and ask questions by the chair. We will be using the e-voting on mod.gov for this meeting. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be recorded, except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the Council to have consented to being recorded. By entering this meeting as a speaker, you are also consented to being recorded by the Council and the possible use of those sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The Council, members of the public and the press may record, film or photograph this meeting when the public and the press are not lawfully excluded. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Karen. Right, um, we'll now move on. Um, could the officers introduce themselves? First of all, Emma. Yes, good morning. Emma Richbell. I'm the Assistant Manager, Food Safety and Licensing. Uh, Catherine. Uh, Catherine Green, Licensing Officer. Kerry. Kerry Chandler, Training Licensing Officer. And Nigel. Nigel Delu, Legal Advisor. And Karen. Good morning, Karen Sayer, Governance Officer. Thank you. I'll now move to the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. Mr Chairman. Margaret. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a statement. Now, thank you. Um, I would like to make a statement. Um, I would move that this committee has no confidence in the chairman or the vice chairman, um, and I move that there is a vote on that subject. Legal advice on that? Is that a time and place? Um, it's, it's new to me, but I, 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 if there's a seconder, then I don't see the reason why you can't hold the vote. But um, the chairman and the vice chairman have been elected at full council by, well, by all the councillors, so I can't see, and it wasn't close, it was uh, quite a substantial, so I can't see the point. It, within the constitution, and Rob will read out the relevant clause, um, at any time a committee member may raise the subject of no confidence in the chairman, and I do this as we are bringing the taxi fares back for the third time to this licence committee. Um, there has also been other issues within the other subcommittees which are confidential um, and I have the backing of the other members beside and behind me. Would you like to read that out please, Rob? Thank you. I don't know. David, do I have to accept, accept this? Apologies, mm. Chair. Um, if I just read out the relevant point under the Constitution so that we're all clear that what the Council of Neighbour is referring to, that is part, so this is under part 3D. Committee and Subcommittee Procedure Rules, Paragraph 4, um, which outlines that removal of the Chairman at any meeting of a committee or subcommittee, a council may propose that the meeting has no confidence in the Chairman. Now, I, I do realise that Councillor Maybury did mention the Vice Chairman, so I believe it can only be the Chair and not the Vice Chair at the same time. Um, I would obviously defer, so if there's any other interpretation of that, that Mr Deleu would go uh, on that, but that is my interpretation as it writes in this constitution. That seems quite clear. 
Um, and then it goes on to say that the question shall, after debate, be put and if carried by a majority of at least two thirds of the councillors present, the chairman shall stand down and the remainder of the meeting will be chaired by the vice chair or in his or her absence by a councillor elected for that purpose by the meeting. So in this case, I don't believe the vice chair is here. Is that correct, Karen? That's correct, yes. Thank you. So in that case, it would be that a new chair would have to be elected. Um, following a successful vote of no confidence in the chair, if in the elected, sorry, following a successful vote of no confidence in the elected chairman, he or she shall not officiate any, at any subsequent meeting of the committee or subcommittee prior to the next council meeting, and at the next meeting the council shall consider whether to confirm or not the vote of no confidence. If, by a simple majority, the Council shall decide to confirm the vote, the Office of Chairman of the relevant committee shall be declared vacant and a new Chairman shall be elected by the Council. Now, I, just to, I've got this in my um, book here just to work out that it would be two-thirds majority would be five members out of, us, out of the seven, as you cannot have a person cut in half as such, so it would be um, the actual one would be 4.6, but it would be 5, because that would be the required part. Thank you, Chairman. Um, th thank you, Mr Chairman. Could you, could you just clarify that the vote of five members, is that five members out of the ten that are uh, listed in, on the agenda, or is this um, out of the members that are attending? If I may, Chair, the, um, that would be of the members present at the meeting. So, so it's five members out of the members that are present? Yes, yeah, sorry, that calculation is based on the members that are present here at this moment. But there's, there's ten members on, the, um, um, on this committee, and I don't know, there's uh, one, two... Uh, oh, oh, sorry, am I...? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five mi people missing. There's only one. Oh no, there is more people here. Sorry, I hadn't seen them all behind me. Thank your pardon. Sorry, Mr. Just, Chair. If I might just clarify, Chair, the specific wording in there is that by a majority of at least two thirds of the councillors present is the specific writing in the constitution. I think I'd like to cancel this meeting and wait till we vote again at full council. Can that be done? Because it's ridiculous. No, I'm advised against it, Chair. I think we need to go through the process. It's set out in the Constitution and we, we need to follow the Constitution. OK, so. I'll take your advice on that. So, now I know it, you'd like to propose it, Margaret? Yes. And is, who is your seconder? Well, I'm very disappointed with both of you, I must say. Um, on a point of order, I think you have to ask for a seconder, and that person needs to acknowledge that they're seconding it. I don't think I can be proposed by the proposer of the, of the first part of it. John has seconded it, yeah? Do you want him to... John behind you has just seconded it. You need it. to ask for a seconder. Yeah, John's just seconded it. I've just done that. Okay, so what is the procedure now we go for? Right, we we'll take a vote then. All in favour of keeping me as chairman? Can I just take a vote
a vote of no confidence. So, it, so, so, so the motion is the vote of no confidence. Computer's not working. Um, yes, certainly, Catherine. Excuse me, may I ask a question, please? Yes, certainly, Catherine. Thank you. Um, once the wording is on there, could we have advice from the lawyer um, as to how we should vote? Depending on how the questions are expressed, um, I, could we have guidance on how we should vote? Because this isn't okay. a to, vote to that clarify, we... Yes. It's, a, it's a vote of no confidence. So, if you agree with the vote of no confidence, then it's a yes. If you, agree, if you disagree with the motion, then it's a no. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh. Oh, it's just gone off now. Uh, Mr Chairman, could I just ask a question? Does the six-month rule apply, either because this came up at the full council meeting and that's less than six months ago? Um, I'm sure Robert would be able to give me the answer. I, I believe, from what I recall from, from, the, from the Constitution, it's at any time. OK, councillors, that vote is now open in the mod.gov app. Okay, that vote, the result of the vote is five, four and two against, so that's carried, Chair. Uh, no, no, Chair, it's not quite a lot. From the, the Constitution, um, it has to be ratified at the, at the Council, I understand. Um, so we continue with this committee um, and, and then it needs to be put to a, a vote of, of majority through the full Council, I think that's my understanding of it. Mr Chairman, can we just be clear on that? It seems we've obviously voted here on a request to remove the present chairman. Um, and you're now saying that although that vote went, went for removing the present chairman, he remains and we've got to wait now for a full council decision. Yeah, perhaps if you could read out the from the Constitution again, just to not I don't know whether the people that put this forward was aware of all that. I, I was going to say, I think that's, um, uh, if I read it out again for sort of clarity on us, so that we all have, um, have it, uh, all understand what is before us then. So, 
as the majority of at least two thirds has been carried of those members present, the following um, point will now take place. Following a su successful vote of no confidence in the elected chairman, he or she shall not officiate at any subsequent meeting, which would include, in my understanding, today the rest of today's meeting, um, at any subsequent meeting of the committee or subcommittee prior to the next council meeting. At the, meeting of the, at the next council meeting, the council shall consider whether to confirm or not the vote of no confidence that has taken place here today. If by a simple majority, and this is at the council meeting, council shall decide to confirm the vote, the office of the chairman of the relevant committee shall be declared vacant and a new chairman shall be elected by the council so that well, that procedure happens when the next full council meeting takes place. Thank you, Chair. Can I just come back? I think that's rather um, badly worded. I accept what you're saying, um, Mr Carmichael, um, because it really puts the chairman in a bad situation um, that, he, that he can continue and chair a meeting which uh, half of his, or five members of the committee don't wish him to. Um, it's really um, not a nice situation, and I'm not sure whether the people who voted this way fought it through. I don't know. Well, Catherine? It, it seemed to me, when you read it, but obviously I've only heard it, not seen it, that... Oh, sorry, thank you. Um, that in this circumstance, that the vice chairman, who obviously isn't here today, should take the rest of today's meeting. Um, and that then it goes to a vote at full council. And that the vice chairman, if there are any further meetings before the next full council meeting, that the vice chairman should sit. Mm. But obviously the vice chairman isn't here today. So should we maybe vote as to how today's meeting should, or discuss how today's meeting should proceed? I'm, I'm sure Rob has, has, um, has explained it, that the chairman now has to be voted in for this meeting. If, if, I, if I could just clarify so what the next steps are so that we're all aware of what happens next. So following that vote, and the vice chair is not present, as we alluded, as was pointed out earlier. A vote must now be taken on for a chair for this meeting only, not for the subsequent meetings, as I understand it, because the vice chair would take over if they are present at the next meetings. And um, I would ask my colleague Karen Sayer to do that um, now, so that a new chair can be formed and business can continue. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question, Robert. Um, I understand fully what, what you've said. Can you take your mask off? I can't oh, understand what you're saying. I, sorry. I understand fully what you've said. Um, if at the next full council meeting, um, Councillor Newman um, was to win the vote and uh, goes back into the chair position, can it be challenged again? Can, can, can this be repetitive where things are challenged more than once? Rather than the... Um, answer all the questions that perhaps I shouldn't answer without consulting the monitoring officer. Um, I would ask if you put that question to the monitoring officer um, to ask what, if that is a situation that could happen, because um, I don't feel that it's a, my place to comment on that at this time, but the question is valid to the monitoring Yes, because I, I wasn't being rude, but I just wonder anyone in the position that, that the chair is here, that could happen at an, any committee. I would doubt it because it disrupts a meeting every time, doesn't it? It's ridiculous. Once you've been voted in on full council, you should be able to do, them, do it for a year and you, you know, make your decision at full council. May I have a comment? Yes, certainly. I, I have had on more than one occasion the comment made, Mr Chairman, mm -hmm. as you are now, you, well, you're not the chairman at the moment now, um, that the the business of the licensing and regulatory committee interferes with your business hence that's why you are always in such a hurry to end a meeting um, and we have also had taxi fares come back for the third time if you read the minutes you will see that i queried about the, dis the discrimination for equality previously none of this has been picked up by either you or the vice chairman and for those reasons that's why i have challenged you in your position 
you have lost that vote and I would suggest for your own personal um, position that you retire gracefully from this meeting and let us carry on with the taxi fares, which is what we're here to do. Well, Councillors, we do need to move on. Well, first of all, I'm going to answer that. Um, it doesn't interfere with my business because I just close. I mean, I can retire tomorrow if I want to. I think we I need go, to... Sorry, um, no, Mr Chairman, could I... I, I think we need to move on with, uh, with, with a nomination for, for a new chair so we can get the, the business... Yes, yeah, so I, I don't think you should the, subject the yourself to any more of this oh. um, attack. Well, I'll say I think it's absolutely disgusting, and especially when it's you lost the vote, Margaret. It's just sour grapes. Really. I think, Mr Chairman, that's yeah. neither here nor there. Oh, I OK. Would, so we'll go through the vote for that. Chairman, then. Personally, I think we don't want to get personal. Let's just get on with it. No, I'm not getting personal. No, but everybody. Just Hamsters, try and keep it on the we have um, nominations for a chair to take over today's meeting, please? Councillor Nunn. I propose Councillor Maybury. Thank you. Is that seconded? Councillor Creswell. Okay, we need to vote on that. Is the vote ready, Mandy? Okay, the vote is ready in the mod.gov app. We're voting for Councillor Maybury to chair the meeting. Okay, the result was 5, 4 and 2 again, so that's carried and Councillor Mabry is elected chairman of this meeting. Unless there are logistic issues, I would say stay where we are because of the, the, the COVID restrictions. Um, thank, thank you very much. And oh, sorry, um, um, Councillors, I've been hit the wrong button. I've come right out of this. Does it matter? No. Go back into Modgo. Beg your pardon, all. Thank you very much, um, fellow councillors, and we will continue with the agenda. Um, and this is uh, Friday, the 11th of June, and this meeting now starts at 9:58, according to my computer. Um, item one on the agenda is substitutes and apologies. Do we have any, Karen, please? Thank you. We have received apologies from Councillor Carpendale and Councillor Dawson. And um, is there anything from Councillor Gould, please? I haven't received anything from Councillor Gould. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we have no substitutions today? No. Thank you very much. Item two is declaration of interests. Has there been any declaration of interest, please, from any councillor? It would be for councillors to declare that now. Okay. But nothing in writing? No? Can't see you all. Right. Thank you very much. Um, and item three will be to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 11th of December 2020 and that is pages five to eight um, on your screen. I'm just gonna to have to scroll down for this. Right. Um, for accuracy, are there any comments on page five of the minutes, which is the first page of the minutes? That should be it, I think, Peter. 
That is it. You've, you've just gone past it. That's the first page you've just downed. Gone past. Okay. We'll go on to the next page, which is page six. Um, for accuracy, and then page seven for accuracy. Any councillors, any issues with any of those, please? No? No? Um, Karen, may I ask, are these signed or are these just taken as, um, as confirmed because they are recorded, please? We need to take a vote, Chair. Thank you very much. Would you like me to um, conduct the votes? Yes, we need please. a proposer and seconder. Well, I'll propose them if I may. Thank you. And a seconder for the minutes, please. I'm in a disadvantage because I can't see anyone, I'm sorry. <laughs> Perhaps I'll have to rely on the, on the screens. Thank you. Chair, if it helps, I've um, emailed you the order of proceedings for this morning. Thank you. And I've just managed to knock the, knock the computer as I turned around. Right. We've got a proposal and a seconder to confirm the minutes. Um, Thank you. And the vote is ready in the mod.gov app. Thank you. And if all councillors could vote, please. And the result is 5-4 and 2 abstains, so that's carried. Thank you very much. And we just have to get the page back up again. Thank you. We move on to the agenda. Um, item four is to receive notification of petitions in accordance with the council's petition scheme. None received, Chair. Thank you. Um, item five is questions from councillors. Have you received any, please? None received, Chair. Thank you. Item six. Um, um, Madam Chairman, can I ask a question? Questions from councillors. Do these have to be written in beforehand or can questions, can I dream up a question now? No, it's questions to be submitted um, before the meeting. There's a, a deadline which I believe is. Three could that days. be included under Tide in future? Because that made it look like anybody could just ask a question. That just tidies us up. Thank you. Rob, in accordance with the Constitution. Sorry? It's um, questions by councillors in accordance with the Constitution. I think Rob wishes to comment. If, if I may, Chair, there's under the, the um, questions from councillors rule, that's for specifically for councillors who are not at the meeting, so a councillor at the meeting can ask any question, um, but it's specifically the questions from, from councillors is anyone who is not on the committee and wouldn't be present at the meeting to ask, so Councillor Beer can ask questions relating obviously to anything that's before us today or anything regarding licensing, um, if that helps, Chair. And, so we, and I, that can be asked at this moment? It, it can be asked at any moment if... Yeah. In, yeah. Okay. okay. So so can I ask Councillor Beer, you have a question. Would you like to ask, yes. ask it? Yes. Could, could we know um, how the photon went uh, earlier? We, 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 um, it wasn't very clear. Um, do we know who's photon? Or can you remind us of the exact photon figures again? Because I couldn't really hear at that time. The vote for the no confidence in the chair? Uh, the, yes. 
Um, the result was five, four, and two against. And the next one is both for the present chair. Five, four, two against. Okay. That's fine. I think I did hear one, but I didn't really hear what you said. Thank you. Any other questions from councillors? No? Thank you. Um, we'll, we will move on to item six, which is BLR stroke 21 stroke 2 Hackney Carriage Table Affairs Review. This is on um, pages 9 to 16 for councillors in their pack. And I hand over to um, Emma Richbell. Um, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Chair. This report refers to a review of the current table of fares fixed for Hackney carriages operating in the controlled zone of Baber District. The committee will be aware that this review process has been extended and problematic, with earlier proposals being rejected by Cabinet and most recently suspended following a Cabinet recommendation to adopt. I regret the errors made to date and would like to briefly summarise the work undertaken by the licensing team over the last few weeks to ensure that the proposal before you today is fit for purpose. The starting point this time was the trade itself. We had received a number of tariff proposals from drivers, operators and meter agents and we used these to develop three tariff proposals which would provide an increased income for the trade whilst being affordable for the travelling public and, in particular, would not penalise those who are only able to travel in one of the larger wheelchair accessible vehicles. The three draft proposals were shared by email with all operators and self-employed drivers of Hackney carriages, asking them to express a preference ahead of the formal consultation. Unfortunately, the response to this was very small but the draft proposal before you today was the preferred option. The draft table of fares is based on passenger numbers rather than vehicle size, and rates two and three serve dual purposes. For example, rate two, which is the nighttime rate for one to four passengers, also serves as the daytime rate for five to eight passengers. The report and proposed tariff has been subject to an equality impact assessment in accordance with the Council's procedures. We are also currently undertaking a survey of the use of taxis and private hire vehicles by those with disabilities to investigate whether the current provision is adequate. This is primarily to inform the ongoing review of the taxi policy, but there will also be an opportunity to take these findings into account before any new tariff comes into force. Officers are therefore proposing two options for the committee's consideration. Option one, that no change be made to the table of fares. Or option two, to create a clear and concise draft table of fares showing four tariffs, with tariffs one to three for vehicles carrying one to four passengers, and tariffs two to four for vehicles carrying five to eight passengers. Recommendations are that the committee consider the two options and that should the committee wish to recommend to Cabinet to amend the table of fares as per the attached Appendix A, that they instruct officers to proceed with a public consultation notice advertising the variations in accordance with Section 65 of the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1976. The varied table of fares should become effective from the 1st of November 2021 and I'd like to draw your attention that's a small amendment the report gives the date of the 18th of October we've decided to extend this just by a couple of weeks to ensure the trade have sufficient time to make the practical changes to the meters that will be required in accordance with section 65 of the local government miscellaneous provisions act 1976 once the table of fares is varied a notice containing the fair table must be advertised in a local newspaper with a similar notice published at the council offices. Any objections received after this will need to be considered at a future meeting of the Licensing and Regulatory Committee. This is a statutory function 
and the legislation provides for recovery of the reasonable costs of administration, inspection and supervision of the licensing scheme. In particular, the cost of providing the public notice necessary for commencement of the public consultation is contained within the fees collected as part of the licensing budget. The Act does not set out a specific right of appeal where a council has adopted a maximum table of fares for hackney carriages. However, the fare table may from time to time be subject to judicial review. Consultation and compliance with the prescribed notice requirements mitigate the main risks. And finally, I wish to draw the committee's attention to a slight change of wording to the recommendation at 3.2. So at 3.2, where the report states that should the committee resolve to amend the table of fares, it will of course be for Cabinet to make the final decision, but for the committee today to recommend to Cabinet that the fares be amended. So that's a recommendation rather than a resolution. That concludes my summary, but I will do my best to answer any questions. Uh, thank, you very, thank you very much, Emma, for, for that. Um, I do have a couple of questions, so I'm going to start, if I may, and then hopefully other councillors um, will follow if they have any. Um, your comment was that there was very small response from the trade. I thought that the trade were actually going to be here today. Um, obviously they're not and, I, and they're, they were, it's being live streamed clearly they may well be watching on the live stream um, it's always difficult isn't it you, you put out information there for people to respond to and, and they don't always respond as you would like it was, it was a tiny number I think it was five or six responses out of the entire trade which is disappointing but it was an attempt just ahead of, of the formal consultation to get a feel if we could for the, which would be preferred of the, of the three so we did our best, we had a small response, we are going with one that's most popular from that very small response. Okay, I'm, go I'm going to come back, Emma, because um, obviously you know I've been very supportive of you over this issue and I have spoken to you. Um, I am just a little concerned that the trade has lost a bit of confidence in us as the licensing committee and I would hope that once this is resolved, once and, and for all, that we will have a better relationship with them. Um, I think that's fair to say that's not a criticism of you because I have been very supportive of you. My second question is, um, where are wheelchair users going in this tariff, please? So as a wheelchair user now, you are able to use a larger vehicle and be charged no more than you would be for an able person able-bodied passenger using a saloon car so that's obviously a primary objective of this proposal and that and that will be fixed absolutely absolutely yes thank you very much my other comment following on from that and i did use wheelchairs is that it does actually involve all types of mobility assistance apparatus um, i have experience of this my husband has a i call it a walker it's an aid which is supposed to fit in any boot of any car. I can assure you it does not. It needs its own seat within a vehicle. And I think as a licensing committee, we should be very aware of the fact that this, these apparatus do not compact as much as, um, as everyone says that they do. Um, it's very, very exciting if I have a grandchild in the back of the car and I need to put a walker in there as well. So I try not to, to take both out. Uh, did Council Councillor Ayres wanted to comment on this too, yes. please? Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for all your work, Emma. It must have taken you hours. Really appreciate it. Um, can I ask um, a, sort of a ballpark number of how many drivers or taxi operators were contacted out of the few that have responded? Thank you. Can I ask Catherine, as she actually did the email response for that, to give you the numbers, if that's OK, thank you. Hello. Um, we sent them all out to the Hackney Carriage proprietors, and um, we got five responses from them, but it was sent to anybody who owns a Hackney Carriage. Ballpark, I think we've got about 10 or 11 um, independent drivers and or companies that, that drive on, 
帮他喊一开穿一个。For replying to that, um, so so basically, it's about fifty percent in those sort of terms. Mm. I must admit, it's more than I thought because I thought we sent it to all individual drivers, which would have been a larger number. But on that basis, it is fifty percent. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Beer wished to ask a question, and then I'll go to my other. Thank colleagues. you, Madam Chairman. No, sorry, but so anyway, I get your attention. I'm sorry, you're behind That's fine. me there. Um, just to point out that you, you, you Madam weren't solely the only councillor at the last meeting that was concerned about the um, taxi drivers um, being consulted and attended. And um, certainly 10.8 in the minutes, I did ask the, uh, the question about regarding the public consultation exercises and the responses received. Um, I'm still concerned that we don't seem to have got um, really any response from them uh, as of last time because um, it came to the committee we were told that um, I think there was one and I could be corrected Madam Chairman um, that I'm not quite correct on this but I seem to think that there was one or two taxi drivers that was speaking on behalf of the rest of them and was voicing an opinion that they weren't happy and yet we were led to believe by officers that all these people had more or less been contacted and that they all agreed with what was going forward. And I think this is why it was put forward. Um, as I say, I wasn't happy at the time and others weren't. But um, now I'm not sure whether they're happy or not because no one's here, as the chairman has said, and um, we haven't heard from them. So. I just wonder whether we should get a response or go back to them. Have you had communications and can you say with hand on heart that they're, they're all happy and, and prepared to go along with this? Because we don't want to find ourselves in another situation where it all has to come back to us again. So, Thank you, Madam uh, Chairman. Yeah, so obviously this, the proposal today is, is to go to that consultation a further time with the trade. Um, the letters are ready to go, so they'll get the actual hard copy letter each member of the trade that's to be consulted um, and we encourage them to respond to the consultation. It's difficult to do any more than that but they, they are all going to get a letter and an opportunity. Um, thank you Emma. Uh, Councillor Grandin. Thank you Chair. Um, can you just clarify when you say each member of the trade, you mean each individual member or each company please? Again, Catherine, as you prepared the letters to go, would you like to explain? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so every single driver, any owner of an operator, and each operator itself is getting a letter. So everybody's going to be consulted. Um, if, if I may comment both to Emma and, and Catherine, and I'm sorry to leave our trainee out at the back, but um, if I can just ask both of you, we... The tax affairs have not been reviewed since 2016. My memory serves me right. Correct. We have a statutory period, I think, that we have to review them, or is that not statutory? It's just... To the best of my knowledge, there's no statutory period. Uh, the intention would be, after this review, to review them annually so that there is a small increment on an annual basis. It'd be much simpler. You'll recall that initially we were looking to change the structure of the fares if they're based on percentages. We're still doing that. Um, so once we've got a, a, a fare which is, um, tariff which is much more fit for purpose, then we would in, intend to do an annual small increase on that. Thank you. And if I can just come back on that, you are suggesting that um, these new fares come in on the 1st of November. Um, would the annual review be on the November date or would it tie in to the usual financial year? Please. Yep. Thank you. Um, like with our statement of licensing policy and statement of gambling principles, we did attempt to do the work prior to the 1st of November date in order to, to get that through for the 1st of November once again when we review it for next year. So, so It would what, start about three months prior. About three months before, but we're looking at a November annual It, it would be implemented to come in each November when we do after the review. Thank you. Um, 
Councillor Cresswell has a question, and I'm uh, sorry, well, I can't well, this isn't you. really a question, it's a bit more of a point, really. It's, um, I agree, sending out a, a paper copy or a hard copy to all the drivers, but uh, I think... Take your mask off. Sorry. But I think the, the realism is you won't please everybody all the time. So, although, say, say I'm just making a figure up, 50, you might get 35 who say that's great and, and you'll get 15 who don't. So you, we're going to have to go for majority. Uh, well, anyway, so that's just my opinion. Um, Councillor Beer. Uh, thank you for allowing me to come back. So just pursuing that point, you're writing these letters. We're going to get responses back from them. Uh, will we then... Supposing the responses come back that they're not happy, surely that will knock out 3.2, which was a recommendation to take this forward to Cabinet. Uh, so how are we going to proceed? Because, uh, again, if they're not happy about it, then we, we need to look at it before it goes to Cabinet. Um, so can 3.2 still be left in, or should we omit that and, and insert something that allows us to hear back from the taxi drivers? My understanding is that we would receive the consultation responses. We would, if we felt it was appropriate and necessary, uh, further amend the tariff proposal to come back to the Licensing Regulatory Committee for further consideration for them to recommend if they wished to Cabinet to adopt it. Um, um, Councillor Beer, yes, reply, please. Yes, so. What you're saying then is that um, the result of the consultation will come back to this committee before we send or enact 3.2. Is that correct? That's correct. Because I think this is where we went wrong last time. That's so, correct. That's my um, understanding. Have I made myself clear, Madam Chairman? Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, good. Um, hello. Um, thank you very much for confirming that. Um, the consultation period, um, i.e. the letters that are going out to the taxi operators, what sort of period of time will they be given, please? I believe that's four weeks. Um, 28 days. 28 days specifically, yes. OK, 28 days. Oh, sounds about four Thank weeks. you very much. <laughs> so we, we are anticipating, if, if I may just to um, do a resume on this, that if the committee is minded... Um, to put this forward, that then the letters will go out to the taxi operators. They will have 28 days, and I'm assuming from Monday, uh, they will have 28 days to reply. They will then be collated, and then time scale for bringing it back to the committee, please. Um, this is due to come back to committee on the 13th of August. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have, we have a time frame. Um, any other questions from any councillors? No. No. No other councillor wishes to make any comments on this? Um, I would also like to comment, if I may, on the survey that's gone out for the, um, for the disability um, apparatus users. Um, I have seen it, um, I have completed it on behalf of, of family and I have mentioned to Emma that I thought it should be apparatus rather than wheelchairs for the reasons that I have already um, spoken about. When do we anticipate that this survey will give us some information please? Again that's running for a month, it's going to early July. So we'll have some information then and, and you'll be aware that I've asked our comms team to give a preamble in the social media post to explain that anyone who has mobility issues obviously very welcome to contribute. Uh, yes, and I did get that email and I have gone back to our communications officer and said that I agree with the first line of the paragraph, um, but not the second because it again states wheelchair users only and I have asked for that to be amended. Um, I think we are sometimes too quick to assume that all those with um, less ability 
use a wheelchair and that is not correct. But thank you, Emma, for taking that on board. And thank you also to Jessica, who's also taken that on board. Thank you. So, councillors, um, we have before us the proposal. We also have Appendix A, which is the rates. Can I just ask, have any councillors any questions on the actual ratings, which is Appendix A, please? It had, um, just, I'll get to, that, get to you in a moment, um, Councillor Beer. It has been um, confirmed by our licensing officer that those who use a mobility device will, be, will not be charged the, the higher amount. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for confirming that. Uh, Councillor Beer. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, regarding the, uh, the fares, have these been accepted and seen by the taxi drivers? Do they, are they um, quite happy with this? Have they had any input into it? Uh, again, it's coming back to this business as, um, as agreeing to it, and then we find that they know nothing about it. Absolutely. Already. So to explain further, um, the Appendix A really is, is based on some proposals from the trade and from some of the meter agents who are the people that reprogram the meters. So they'd put forward some alternatives to what we were proposing um, early in the year and last year. We took that as a starting point. So this is based on the, the trade's proposals, if you like, um, uh, because we, we're not experts in taxi tariffs, and they are, quite honestly. <laughs> Um, so that's a starting point. Obviously, there's been a, a pre-consultation attempt to ask them what they would like a bit more, um, and now it will be an opportunity for them to be formally consulted. So it's come from the trade, and it's going to go back to the trade for, to see if they're happy with it, hopefully, this time. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Grandin has a question. Thank you. I've got two questions, if I may, please. Yes, do. Thank Carry you. on. Um, firstly, I, what were the original or the previous rates? Have they gone up by a percentage or how have you worked out? I heard you consulted, um, but how have you worked out the, the rates, please? And, and, and you know, again, are they a percentage? And secondly, are these the rates that, for example, a local authority or a health authority or someone would pay if they have to use um, taxis for regular use? Are they the same rates? That might be a gap in my knowledge, but um, please could you tell me that as well, please? I'll answer the second first, if I may. So this is the, that'd be the maximum fare for anyone travelling in, in a hackney carriage. It's the maximum fare. There's always an opportunity for a lesser fare to be charged, if that's agreeable to the, the driver and the passenger, but it's the maximum to anyone. So that's a, a, a yeah, absolute maximum for whoever's travelling. Um, private hire vehicles, you'll be aware, there's no fixed maximum. So there it's agreed between the traveller and the driver or the operator. And regards the percentage increase, it's very difficult really to say because you may recall from previous discussions that the, the fare which is so the tariff was still currently in operation is itself based on percentages. So there is a daytime fare, you increase by 50% for the night time and 100% for the, the bank holidays to Christmas and New Year times. So in actual fact, it's very difficult to say at the minute today what is being charged because the percentages of course confusion really and what the maximum fare is. So I can't give you a percentage increase that it represents. What I can do, if it's helpful, I can give you some example journeys and what the cost is currently and what it would be. So we, we did, we calculated three sort of typical journeys for Baber District. So we've got a um, a town centre to Tesco's, out of town. Currently, you would pay £5.84 as the maximum. Under the proposed tariff, it would be £6.26. Then a slightly longer journey from Sudbury to Bilderston Health Centre. That's currently £19.12 and would be £21.20. And then we've got a longer journey from Sudbury to West Suffolk Hospital. Currently, £28.40 would be £31.64. So I think, really, from the point of view of the traveller, relatively modest increase. When you work it out as, as best we can as a percentage, it comes out around 10% or so, which sounds quite a lot. 
but then again, the drivers, the operators of trade haven't had an increase since 2016. So from that point of view, as an annual increase, I think it's reasonable. Um, thank you, Councillor Grandin. Did that answer all your questions? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Yes, yes Councillor Ayres, please. Thank you very much. Um, some of our parishioners at St Greg's have complained that they're only allowed to use the taxi vouchers for one trip to the hospital, but not coming back. Can you clarify the reasoning behind that, please, so I can explain? The short answer is I can't, unfortunately. I think the taxi vouchers are administered by Suffolk County Council rather than ourselves. So I can take that away and have a look, but I can't answer it for you right now, I'm afraid, Councillor Ayres. Um, Councillor Ayres, you said you wanted to explain further why? No, I misunderstood. I'm very sorry. I misunderstood you. Thank you. Um, the comments that I have had from the trade, and they have been talking to me, um, is the fact that the larger vehicles obviously cost more in original cost of the actual vehicle, more cost for the insurance, petrol, diesel, whatever fuel they are using. Um, can you comment, please, Emma or Catherine, as to what they have said to you as regard these prices now, please? The message loud and clear from those that we've spoken to has been that they only want the ability to charge more for more passengers, and that would give them sufficient income um, to operate those larger vehicles. Um, I mean, that, that they, they have been saying that for some months, and we haven't really heard that from them properly, but we are now. That's what they really want, is the ability to charge for the five to eight passengers when they carry that many, but they don't want to be able to, to have to charge that for everyone. And, I'll give an example of a, a self-employed um, driver who has a larger vehicle um, and he said to me, I don't want to have to charge a bigger flag fare for one person. I won't get any trade. I only have that one large vehicle. So that's why we really need to be based on passenger numbers rather than the vehicle size itself. And can we achieve that? That's what this will achieve. It yes. will achieve it. Yes. Just confirming. Councillor Beer, you had a question. Well, I, I think you went on to answer it, but I will just get clarification. So, when you say they're going to... Sorry, I'll take that off. Um, you're saying that when they carry more passengers, is this over four? Um, so, if they've got five, six or seven, that's when the price will go up. That's correct. So, so we're quite clear on that, that up to four will just be the one rate. Yes. But if, if there's five or six or seven passengers, then there would be the additional charge per person. It's, it means you, you move up a tariff, basically. So it means that the, fare, the flag fare, the fare that appears as soon as you get in the vehicle will be higher if you're five to eight passengers. Um, thank you, Councillor Beer. Thank, thank you, Emma. Um, and, and the trade are happy with doing that, and the metering personnel can deal with that too. Thank you. That's right. We, we made sure to, to run it by the meter agents, if you like, to make sure that that's practically possible, and it is. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, councillors? Just Councillor Newman, oh, nothing from Just you? Quick. No. Okay. Sorry, oh, Laura, yes, I was going because I'm behind you. Yes. Better take this off. Uh, just a quick comment. Um, understood, Peter, up to four people would be a certain tariff, and then five onwards would be another tariff. If four people went into a seven or eight seater taxi, whatever, and say we were going to Ipswich for an evening out, how do you know what tariff you'll be in charge, really, as a, as a, as a customer? The um, vehicles are required to display the tariffs, so it should be clear when you enter the vehicle as to what you would be paying if, based on the number of passengers. And obviously the, the, the fare is displayed as you travel, so you should be able to check what's being displayed on the meter against the, the advertised tariff. Yeah, I understand that, but I, 
I don't think the general public would know if it's a tariff for four people or one for, for the larger amount of people. That's, that's all I'm getting at. Okay. I mean, usually, not being rude, we, we agree a price if we go out of town and, and uh, so we know what we're getting into. But that's sure. just... In, in actual fact, if you're, if you're travelling outside of the controlled zone of Baber District, a, a fare can be agreed in that way, but it still mustn't be more than the uh, metre would display. Um, thank you, Emma. So to confirm, for, for instance, because you used this um, example previously, someone from Sudbury travelling to the West Suffolk Hospital, which is out of Baber District Council, they could negotiate their price. Mm -hmm. That's correct, yes. Right. How do we get that message across to the public, please? Well, it's, it's the same message really for all journeys because you can always negotiate a lower fare than that displayed on the meter anyway. It can't be higher than that. So it's a good point and maybe we need to raise public awareness of it um, that the, the, the displayed fare is the maximum chargeable. Um, thank you. And I, I think that is absolutely correct. Um, hopefully we will be able to get back to our parish liaison meetings in the future and we'll be able to take that message out to the public which will be to initially parish councils and other associations and we can get that message out. Um, I have seen you, Councillor Grandin, I'll come back. Um, what I am seeing, my vision in, in the future, and I'm sure my colleagues will probably agree with me, is that we are having um, an influx of people into our area and also that they are older and perhaps will not be using their own motorised vehicle. Um, so we really do need to get this message out, especially to the new developments. That's my opinion. Yes. Councillor Mowbray, excuse me, yes. may I just check with Catherine Green regard that I haven't told you incorrectly about the maximum fare if you, if you travel outside of the district. It's, I'd just like to check with one of our officers if that's all right. Is that correct, Catherine? Um, I believe so, yes. Thank you. I just want to be 100% sure. I'm still only 15 months or so into licensing, so I wouldn't want to tell you wrong. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we, we appreciate the, the dual role here today, or even triple. Um, with, it's Kimberly in the back, isn't it? Kimberly? Kerry. Kerry. I beg your pardon. Kerry. Thank you. Catherine, um, Councillor Grandin. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I must admit, I didn't know that the fares displayed were the maximum fares. I thought that was the fair um, and I would guess that that's probably the majority of, of the public who use um, taxis and cabs. I wonder whether it would be within regulations or whether we can make a suggestion that um, taxis have to have a sticker explaining that. <laughs> It is, it's, on, it's on the tariff table. It does say um, maximum Hackney carriage fares allowed. Um, yeah, we, we could raise awareness of it, I think. Yes, Councillor Cressel? Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, I agree with Catherine. As a person who just gets in a taxi and to see the metre spinning round, I don't think many people in the general public were aware of a maximum and they just see it going round and think that's what they've got to pay end of. But I do think generally people who are doing longer distances in taxi, probably whether it's the Stansted to go on a holiday or whatever they do, do tend to try and get a price and don't have a meeting running before they start. Those sorts of journeys would normally book with a private hire operator and agreed, correct, yes. Uh, thank, thank you very much. There is just one item that I would like to raise with you, which is um, at the bottom of, of Appendix A, where it says no extra charge shall be made for luggage, shopping, assistance dogs, wheelchairs or mobility scooters. I would personally like to see their put in their um, disability apparatus. We can certainly do that, it's no problem. Thank you. Yes, that, uh, as an amendment. Um, um, I'm going to ask Karen or Rob if we, we've already been, it's already been suggested that 3.2 is likely altered. 
um, do we need to take a vote or make a comment on the very last comment that I have made on Appendix A? Yeah, we need a proposer who would then, um, if they wish, add that to their proposal. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we have finished all the questions from councillors, so I would like to, <clears throat> to move that um, we take this um, proposal, and I'm just trying to get to the 3.2, sorry, the commuter's always slow, uh, to 3.2 with the wording and <clears throat> also the alteration of are, are the very last item. Um, so the recommendations are councillors, um, 3.1 that the committee consider the two options set out in 2.1 and also 3.2 that the committee proposes or the committee forwards what word would you like there because we can't resolve would you like me to clarify yes please Karen. thank okay. you well, i've got um that the committee agrees to recommend to Cabinet that the Table Affairs be amended as per Appendix A and therefore instructs officers to proceed with the public consultation notice advertising the variations in accordance with Section 65 of the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1976. The varied Table Affairs shall become effective from the 1st of November 2021. Thank you. And we need uh, a Councilor, proposer and a seconder, of course. Yes, Councillor Beard just wants to comment at the moment. Uh, yes. Um, uh, at what point will that come back to us as a committee before it gets to Cabinet? Because if Cabinet are going to make accept the recommendation, sorry. Um, Cam Councillor Beard, we did discuss that, and that's going to come back to us on the 13th of August before oh, it goes I to the Cabinet. I did not know the 13th of August was the date suggested. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, councillors, are you? Do you actually understand yep. three point two? Yes. Um, are you in agreement to the wording, everyone? Yes. 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 Um, I have proposed it. If I could have a seconder, seconder, seconded from Councillor Ayres. So the wording of three point two will be as Karen read out to us, plus. There will be the amendment at the very end, which alters it to um, disability apparatus. And your seconder is happy with that? Yes. Thank you. Um, are we going to a vote now, please? Yep. Mandy's, Mandy, thank Mandy's you very arranged, much. Um, set up the vote, and that's ready now in the modern.gov app. Thank you. Um, it doesn't actually say, does it, about the alteration on the very end. Um, are we just taking that as read? Karen, this is the recommendation. The amend amendment to Appendix A. At the very end, yes, where it says disability apparatus. Do we need to put that in writing or are we taking that as read? Perhaps we need our legal expert here, please. Well, I, I think that the... The meeting is being ministered and recorded accordingly, so I, I think that will be sufficient to, to include that amendment. Thank you very much for that ruling. Thank you. Um, and we all need to vote now. It may well be that I'm the only one who hasn't voted yet because it won't let me vote. Ooh, that's exciting. now voted. Apologies, it was being slow. Thank you, Chair. The vote is in and that is carried. With seven votes for. Thank you very much. Let me just go back to the agenda when we can get there. Oh. <coughs> 
taking yes, just taking your time to get there. Right, um, page up. Right. Thank you very thank you very much, councillors. That concludes the business on the agenda. Just to confirm the date and time of the next meeting which is Friday the 13th of August 2021 at 9.30 and I thank you all for attending and thank you also to all the officers who have um, given a lot of time for this subject. Thank you very much. <laughs>